Hello everyone, this is the Paper Princess and a couple days ago I posted my latest project which is an 8.5 by 9.5 album. Yeah, I used Graphic 45's Fairy Wings and it was just such pretty paper and it was very nice to look at and I, I loved working with it. So in this video we are going to make the base album for you to make that book and when I first made my first base album i was overwhelmed don't be overwhelmed this is it's not bad and we're going to go through it step by step and before you know it you'll be making them in your sleep so don't be overwhelmed and we're going to have fun the only thing i do have to say right in the beginning so you don't go making it and all of a sudden you get to the part where you need to put the hinge in. I can't teach you how to make the hinge, but I will tell you what paper you need. You basically will need a piece that leaves a half inch at the top and bottom, and you can learn how to make a hinge. This is this album will have four hinges because there are four page double-sided pages, which is a total of eight. Um, I will tell you that they're three and a half, three quarter inches hinge and a three quarter inch space between each hinge but uh, a lot of you know how to make that if you don't um, you can certainly learn online and uh, the, the place where the original Kathy King from Paper Phenomenon she designed and made that hinge system and it's wonderful so if you make any of her books which are well worth doing you will have that knowledge forever um, and just check out her website. She's got beautiful paper there, beautiful projects, and you will learn how to make the hinge. Um, and, and other people online, they have bought the license, and, uh, and that's basically, you can learn from any of those websites also. So that I do have to say in the beginning uh, is the only thing I won't be showing you how to do. But we will make this album together and then all the pages I will decorate and we'll go step by step. So ready, let's get going. Now first we need uh, some black cardstock is what I used. I used American Crafts, I'll show you that. This is an 80 pound paper and uh, it's just, it's really nice to work with. It's not too thick, 100 pound is a little too thick. and. Uh, 60 you can get away with, but 80 is, is what I like to, to work with. One side is linen, and that just gives it a real good feel. Uh, you will need some chipboard. I use, let me show you, paper accents. This is uh, eight and a half by 11, and since it's an eight and a half by nine and a half book, you just need to cut one side to nine and a half. So that is what I use, and it's a nice thickness, 90 point. So it's, it's pretty thick, it'll be sturdy, very nice. And uh, you just need a bone folder, pencil, um, ruler. I use this one that's got eighth, eighth and sixteenth inch markings. If you don't have that, I will tell you where on a regular ruler these cuts go. So don't... Uh, be overwhelmed if I use something with an eighth inch. I will show you where you find that on your regular ruler. I have undo. Occasionally there's a mistake and this stuff is the best. So it will be like a mistake never happened. And there's always one or two times you need it in a project. I use art glitter glue, but really only when I attach the page to the hinge. That's all I use it for. Otherwise I use a, a tape gun. I have uh, some score tape. I used the big roll to make this base album as well as my standard 3 8 inch that I will use throughout the book. And I do use some book binding tape. This is a cloth like tape. It's an inch and a half. You can use two inches, but just type in uh, book binding tape on online and you will find this. This is an inch and a half. So. Uh, I also have a miter here to cut the corner of the book, but if you don't have one, you can use a ruler and I will show you how to do that. But this is uh, from colorwaysarts.com. I got this, it was a couple bucks, and uh, it, it's, it's real helpful. But if you don't have it, I will show you how to, to do that with, with just a regular ruler. 
and then a mailer here because you need a little piece of plasticky Tyvek type of paper uh, just on the spine. It'll help the book from cracking. This book binding tape will, will also help with that. So let's dig in. Okay, so what you need to do first is, is cut your chipboard. And just so I can show you, um, you don't have to get this one, but this is what I use in case any of you have questions. This is a Carl um, cutter and it cuts really thick uh, bunches of paper and it, I use it mainly for this chipboard. So this is a big one, I think it's a 15 inch, but they do have smaller ones. You just need at least 12 inches to cut these uh, pieces of chipboard. And you cut two at, I know my, my white ran out here, so I'm using gold, but eight and a half by nine and a half, and you need two of those. If you're using the eight and a half by 11, you just take it on the 11 inch side and, and cut it at nine and a half. Um, because what you want, your book is gonna be facing this way. You want, when you bend it, this is stiff. If you have it the wrong way, it's kind of wah wah. You don't want that wobbliness, you want stiff. So it will automatically be facing the right way if you use eight and a half by 11 chipboard. If you're using 12 by 12, you just make sure that when you, you're cutting your piece, and this is uh, the long side runs vertically, that when you bend it, it's stiff. Okay, so two pieces of that and one spine piece, which is at eight and a half by, oh, it's not eight and a half, it's nine and a half. Sorry about that. Nine and a half by four. I just wrote it wrong. I do believe it's the right, yeah. It's nine and a half by four. Okay, I just wrote it wrong. When you cut off your little extra one and a half inch piece when you made the cut, um, just take two pieces and tape them together because this is going to be our spacer that will be what you need between the cover and spine. You want that much space. Just basically rule of thumb is two um, uh, pieces together of the same chipboard and, and that's your space. So I have that that I just made and let's get started putting this together. The reason why I need this four inch piece, if I use too much more than three and a half for a spine, there's just not enough room on the ends. So I need to have a little extender piece here. And I've been putting it in the middle um, and that way the lines are right in the spine and you cover them up with, you'll have your book binding tape and then you'll have your decorative paper and, and you won't see the lines and you'll have enough room. So let's bring out a score. You can either use a scoreboard or a score runner like this. And I am going to use the flat side facing up, linen sides underneath and I'm gonna just put a half inch score line on each side of this little extender piece. Okay. All right. Then we use our 3 8 inch score tape. And I'm going to hold it like this. I learned that a few years ago and it just gives you control. You know, I like holding it that way. Give it a try if you want. Then you were putting this tape and we're running it right along the bottom. You can have a little bit showing, but you want to be close to that edge. You basically just don't want to go over your score line. And I, I just made this, I don't know if I said that already. It's just a piece of plastic. I put a telephone pop dot and it helps me tear the tape. You can also use scissors or just tear it yourself. But if you want your tear line nice and straight, I just made that up. You can also use a ruler, take a ruler and put it there and just tear. Okay, so I'm gonna take my bone folder and every time you put score tape down you just want to press it down make sure it's sticking there and there's there's always little air bubbles so that gets everything out 
and then take it along that score line, give it a fold, and press that down. Same thing on the other side. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to take one of my 12 by 12 pieces. I'm putting the flat side facing up. This is the flat side facing up and this is my score. And basically it's face up and I'm gonna tear off this tape under here and then press it down. So the way I do that, and I'm just taking this off. I have, this is a, uh, it's from Creative Memories. I think they call it a all purpose tool, but you can use a pick tool from Cricut or, you know, a edge of a scissor if you want. I've been using this for a while. All right, so we have our piece here, have our piece here. I wanted to make sure it's lined up this way. And I'm gonna put this top piece flush against this 12 by 12 piece. I don't see any table there, so I know that the two papers are butted right up against each other. And I am just gonna fold down this one side. Walk myself over to the other side. Make sure the papers are butted right up against. I don't see any table showing under here. And put that right up against there. And just put that side down and just go across. Okay. And it looks like I got a little bubble. It's not bad, but I could I could always straighten it out if I want. Let's see here. That happens every once in a while. Yeah, I just need to move it over just a little tiny bit. Okay. Usually that doesn't happen, but it happens. So now I'm gonna take this piece Take my next 12 by 12 piece, flat side up. This is the uh, the other piece here, the four inch piece, and above that is the 12 inch paper that we just put. Peel this off. And let's just do the same thing. So I'm gonna put these right up against each other. Go on over to the other side. Put that down. And there we go. Okay, so now we have a nice big long piece. And let's bring out our, we're gonna be covering these soon, but I wanna bring out my front and back cover and just put it down here just so I can see you know, what we've got going on. The, really, these two score lines right here, you just don't want to have in, the, in between these, the spine and your front and back cover. You just want it to be n not in, an, you want it to be up against one of the um, chipboards, not in the space in between. So I am just looking to make sure that is so, which it is. Okay, so what I want to do, I want on one side, our, we're just going to make a vertical line and that will help us make the whole rest uh, nice and straight and even. So you want to start with a pencil line and really what I do is I take my ruler, which is about an inch and a half. Uh, the Tim Holtz rulers are about the same like that and you put that right up against the edge so that you know that when you draw your line it is perfectly straight because this ruler is right at the edge and then you you have a just the width of your ruler there now the important thing is you want this intersection point so what am i going to do let's see if i put this right across the bottom i want to make sure how much space do I have going across the top? I'd like, I'd like an inch. 
And this is, it looks like, nah, it looks like a little shy of three quarter inch. So what I'm gonna have to do, I can't use that rule where I just put the ruler down here because it's a little too wide. Um, so I wanna just make little tick marks along the way. I'm going to have this be, let's see, if I have it go here. Um, at an inch. So I'm gonna move this aside and basically take your ruler and just make little marks at an inch here. And a few here and we will connect these dots. So we'll have an inch at the bottom. Take my ruler, line it up, got all your little dots there, and you just connect it. Okay, and then go keep going. Okay, so this intersection point is really the most important because you'll take your chipboard here and put it in that corner. And once this first piece is laid down, the rest follow. You know, it will just go along that line and they'll follow right next to there. So it's real important that this is the main point here that's going to start us off. And if I put this here, I'm just going to measure up to make sure. It looks like I'll have like an inch and a quarter at the top. Yes, I'll have an inch and a quarter. So you can do an inch or an inch and an eighth down here. And that is fine. You want at least an inch. So you can set this aside. And let's cover these pieces of chipboard. So now it's time to take our big roll of score tape. And we'll do each one of these front and back covers. So I'm going to put this across and I want to cover the whole thing. Okay, so this is a little too wide to use my tear tool. I've tried it before and it just doesn't quite work. So I'm going to take it, turn it over and just cut this. And just Keep going. Okay. Turn it over. one right at the bottom and then I'll fill in the middle. Okay. All right. Now, some of you may have an inch, inch and a half. They have these uh, score tapes come in every measurement, but I have this and I just think that a couple of these will do the trick. And if you have a little bit, that won't matter. You just, your edges are important. So that's why I wanted to cover the bottom edge first and then just fill in the space. So I'm going to trim off any extras that I have. Okay. And as always, let's just press this down, get all your air bubbles out, take out your frustrations. And there we go. So let's do that again on our other piece. Okay.
this roll of tape, let me measure. This is two and a half inches. Yeah, I do have one that's a four inch. But as you can see, it's a whole lot better than using up an entire roll of the smaller tape. here okay now I, I have a little bit left of my big roll this is my four inch roll so I might as well use that um, as you can see I've been using that a lot so I have a little bit left and I can use it here Right now, we're going to cut a piece of Tyvek, and basically, what this is going to do, we want it to go under our spine and and beyond it just a little bit. So, let me take this mailer here and cut the edges. All right. So basically, I'm going to take my spine right here, and I want about. Doesn't have to be exact, but um, basically about that much. I'm eyeballing it because I've done it so many times, but it's about two inches on the sides. So right around here. Yep. Told you I've done this so many times, I know where the two inch mark is, and I just want to cut. Then I'll cut this. Okay. I have, let me get my little cutter here. And I just can make this straight. Put a little pencil mark here where I want to cut. About the same height as your as your spine if it goes over a little bit that's okay because we're going to be folding all this over and I'm just going to even this up it looks a little uneven here just so that when I put the tape on it'll be easier So now this Tyvek piece is really just, it's about three and, I mean, seven and three quarters by nine and a half. And I want to cover this whole thing with tape, with our score tape.
and I'm going to put a piece at the bottom. I can even just, you know what, I can just go right up to here and just cut a little piece off and that's okay. Like I said, this piece doesn't have to be exact. So, I just have a little, like a uh, tiny, not even a half inch, and I'm just going to cut that off. And press all your bubbles out. And that just, it helps it stick better. All right, so now we are going to bring back our big piece. All right. Okay, so move things out of the way here a little bit. Okay, so our first piece is the most important. But before I do that, I want to put this down because this is going to go underneath our first piece. So I have my first piece that I'm just going to put there for now. Uh, I'm just going to put my spine here. And basically, I, I've got myself along the pencil line and pencil line. It gives me an idea. This is what I have to lay down first, but I want to know where to lay it down. So I have my spine here. I'm gonna put this right over the spine and just eyeball it and make sure I have like an equal distance of tape on each side of that spine. And when I do, I'm gonna hold this down here, take that out of the way, and just put a little pencil mark right here. And that is where I will put this down. Okay, so this will wind up being smack in the middle of my spine. I've got my little pencil mark there, so I'm going to take off this backing. I've got a little trash can here ready because there's going to be lots of score tape backing in a few minutes. Let's put this, and remember it's ultra sticky, so make sure you have it over your mark. I've got it lined up at the edge of that pencil mark, and I'm coming down here to the edge of this pencil that I drew along, and I will just put it down. It has a little wrinkle in it, and that is okay. Press that out. Again, doesn't have to be super exact here, but we know we want it to be along our little pencil line. And now that will cover our spine area. All right, now the first piece, this is important. Wherever you put this piece sets the tone for the whole rest of, of, the, of your chipboard here. So you wanna make sure to get this right. And I have a way that I'm going to do that. I'm going to show you real quick before I take the tape backing off, but I'm going to hold it at an angle. You know, when I take the tape backing off, I'm going to have it right at that corner. That's important. Uh, and it's lined up with that pencil going this way and this pencil line going this way. And if I hold it like this, there's really nothing sticky touching um, this black paper. But you can move it around a little at this point. Once you let it go, it's down. So, but if you do it this way, it gives you time to adjust. All right, so let's get going. If for some reason you make a mistake there and you let it go too soon or whatever, I, that only happened to me once. I was still able to correct it. Um, you can use undo and you can also just make cut another piece of this. This really wasn't too bad. So 
But if you hold it like that, really, uh, when I started doing that, I have never made a mistake since then. This is very sticky now, so let's get ready. Here we go. We've got our line, pencil line here. Got my corner, I'm concentrating on the corner. I wanna put this in the corner and I've lined up that pencil line this way. My eyeball's on it and I've got it right running along the bottom here. I can see that it's going and I feel comfortable with this. So I'm gonna just let go slowly. And there it is. Phew, we made it. I hope you made it. Uh, here we are and we'll press this down. Now we know this is straight there. It's straight and it will help guide the rest of the chipboard pieces. Okay, so the next chipboard piece is our spine. And like I said, we made this little spacer here. So when I take the tape backing off of here, I'm gonna hold this spacer right up against the edge here. This is gonna be off and I'm gonna have it still at that angle that I said. And you can, you can feel it, you can press it. I'm pushing this way uh, and I'm pushing right up against this spacer, which is right up against this front piece. So I know that the space will be exactly the same. And I've got, I'm looking at this, I'm looking at the pencil line right here, and I can even feel with my thumb right there, feel with my finger right here, and then let it go and it will be straight. So here we go. Let's take this piece off. Okay, so it's all sticky, ready to go. I'm gonna put my spacer right up against there, holding it at this angle, I'm pushing it right up against that spacer. Got my thumb here, it feels straight with this front cover. I see my little pencil mark. All right, hold on. Okay, looks good, looks good, and I'm gonna drop it. And there's my space, nice and even. Okay. All righty. Now the next piece, do the same thing, but before we do that, you will notice that there is a fair amount of space over here. Um, and the reason is, you know, because of our spacer. But if we didn't have that spacer, they would have only been like not even a half inch on the side. So I do want to cut some of this off and it's easier to do that before I put this down. I'm going to leave this here just to let me know how much I should cut off and take my ruler, put it up against here and draw a line. Okay. And that is how much I'm going to cut off. And I've done this different ways where I tried a three inch spacer in, in here and then the line winds up in the space and it just many trial and errors and four inches was the one that worked the best. So I'm gonna take this pencil line, put it up against my, my cutter here and just cut that off. Now, let's take off all of this core tape. Pushkin's getting full awfully quick. All right, now 
Got my piece here. I'm gonna put my spacer right here and do the same thing. I'm gonna hold this at an angle here just so I can look and make sure. I'm feeling it with my thumb. It feels all level and even. And I'm just gonna put this down slowly. time for our 3 8 inch and basically we're just gonna put all the way around on this on our paper and then all the way around on the chipboard so take your 3 8 inch roll you don't have to, we're gonna be cutting the corner a little bit so you don't have to go right up to the edge but you know a little bit in and get right up to the to the bottom edge of this paper and just run this along. Okay, we'll go across again. Then, before I press it all down, which we're going to do, um, let's put on the chipboard. So basically, I'm going to go right along the edge of this chipboard. Basically, we're going to wrap this book. See how quick it goes? To me, it feels quick. All right. All right, so now let's press down all our tape. This is um, Teflon Bone Folder. It's really cool. Um, they have this one and they have a, a flat one too, but I find it a little easier than just the, the regular bone plastic one. You could use that too, but there we go. There we go. Now it's time. Well, yeah, let's do the mar miter tool first. I almost said martyr tool, not I mean miter tool. All right, so what this does there is an eighth of an inch right there and you just want that space so if i put this here 
and I drew a pencil line, that's where I'm gonna cut my edge. I want that little space, I don't know if you could see, but right here from this pencil line that I just drew to the corner of this book is an eighth of an inch. So if you don't have a uh, miter tool, you could take a ruler and do the same thing. You could just take it, um, put it, you're watching this corner and, and put it like an eighth of an inch uh, and draw a pencil line. Now, from here to here, what's an eighth of an inch? An eighth of an inch is two lines. So just pick any two lines between this six and this six and seven eighths right here. If you have a regular ruler, just count two lines over from a sixth. Two lines, that much space is an eighth of an inch. So if you can eyeball that, you want two pencil lines right there. And you can just use a regular ruler and do it if you don't have this tool. Okay, so if you want, I will, I will do that for this next one, just to show you. So I'm gonna hold this at an angle. And from here to here, and I, I'm so used to looking at what an eighth of an inch is, but two lines, and I just draw a line. Okay, so you can do it that way. All right, now before we cut and wrap, we want to get this paper a little used to being bent because we're going to be bending and folding it over. So I'm going to take it right now and just, just give a little bend this way. Hold it down, give a little bend that way. And bend this way. Just get that paper being used to being folded right there because we're going to be doing that. Okay. Okay. Okay, so next thing we do is cut our corners that we just drew our line across. Also going to fold right here All right. okay so now we're gonna start with the bottom and we're gonna fold this over so we've we've gotten it used to being bent a little and we're gonna just start here so what you need to do is take off your tape backing just on this bottom row and the bottom row of the chipboard. It gets a little staticky. Stay in there. Okay. So what you want to do is you want to start in the middle. So I'm going to take the middle and I'm going to got my hand here and I'm just going to push up and just roll this just like that. Go from the bottom on the table and go right up over the top and just keep going. Do it again over here on this side. Okay. And then take your bone folder and press that down that and with those two uh, pieces of score tape this is not going anywhere because basically you'll have a piece here and a piece up there looks good I'm gonna take this and just gently 
right in the fold here. And let's do the other side. So I do my long sides first and then I do the sides, which I will show you. Don't jump ahead because uh, there's a way to get the corners to go nice and smooth. So that's why first we're gonna do the top and bottom. Start in the middle again. Right up over the top. pressure right here okay so now our sides now when we do the sides if you just were to fold it over like that you'd have a little piece of that corner would stick out you don't want that so before you do anything take a bone folder or something and you're gonna this 1 8 inch piece right here that we had cut we're gonna just take this paper and sort of fold it around that we're gonna press it in a little like you know how when you're wrapping a present I always say this so I know a lot of you have heard this already but when you wrap a present you fold in your your sides and then you fold up that's exactly what we're doing here we're taking this little piece and folding it inward a little so that when we fold this over you won't have any piece to ah uh, don't know if you can see that let me get a white piece of paper See if you can see what I mean. Um, right here is folded around this corner. We tucked it in. Okay, hopefully you can see that. And we'll do that on both sides, top and bottom. I'm gonna tuck this in. Okay, and then take off your backing. Take this and fold it over. That looks like it's tucking. This needs to be tucked in a little bit more. When I started to move it, it looks like a little bit more needs to be tucked in. Press that down and I will show you what you have. So right now, you don't have that little piece sticking out of your corner. It's wrapped around. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing over here. Tuck that in. reach it that way because I'm not a left handy so I'm going to flip my page over and just tuck this in here and if I fold it over make sure this tucks in all right take off your backing and then fold that over. And voila, we made our base album. Ta-da! So you'll see this little line here and there, but this is, you will cover that up with the score tape 
um, with the, I mean, the book binding tape, which I'm going to show you right now. Uh, so let's put our book binding tape on. And basically, if you don't have it, these edges could crack, you know. So it's a lot of opening that you're going to be doing on this album throughout the year. So this will protect it. And what I do here, okay, so I'm going to take my book binding tape. And I'm going to start about an inch down. I don't want to start it at the top because then I'll, I'll see. So I want to start it inside the book because this will be covered up. Um, this piece of tape here is going to be going right over top of this uh, space here. And, and I'm trying to, I'll just put the space in the middle of the tape basically. I'll have the same amount of tape on both sides. And I'm going to just roll it down. Get to the bottom, and then you flip the book over. And just keep it going. This stuff is not ultra sticky, so you can move it around a little. But basically, follow along here, and you're keeping this straight. Flip it over again, and now you're back where you started. So you can just take this tape and cut it little bit past where you started and you will not see that line that's going to be covered up but basically every time you fold it now this is a nice edge here and it won't wrinkle because this is cloth so we're going to do the same thing over here start right around here Beautiful, and it feels good. This will be covered up, and you just made yourself a very nice book in just the size you want it. That's the beauty of making your own books. You can buy these books sometimes, you know, and, and decorate the pages, but when you make your own album and you know how to do this, you can make it whatever size you want and it gives you complete control. So you will be very happy with that. Um, so now what I wanna do is just give you the option. I didn't do it, but I, you have the option. A lot of these books you'll see have um, charms on the outside. They'll make a little hole here and you can hang charms down. So if you wanna do that, you punch a little hole you use a crocodile, you can punch a little hole. They sell a brad that has a loop on the outside and uh, it goes right around here in the top and it has your loop here. And then in the future, if you wanna hang um, charms and, and things there, you can. So if you're gonna do that, do that now before you put in your hinge. So what we're gonna do the next step well, I can't show you, but the next step is to make a hinge that fits right here. This is an eight page book, so there are four hinges. Um, on the cutting guide, basically, you just wanna leave a half inch at the top and bottom. So since this is a nine and a half inch book, you wanna cut a piece of paper that's eight and a half inches by 12 and, and make your folds to make your hinges. Mine are three quarter inch hinges and the space between is three quarter inch. So just do that. A lot of tutorials out there, they'll show you using half inch hinge. Just do what they do, except half an inch, you, you want three quarters. And that's it. It will give you a nice thick hinge, give you space between, so you'll have lots of room to put pictures and not have that alligator mouth album. So the next video, uh, I'll have my hinge in, you can go to www.paperphenomenon.com. Uh, she'll teach you how to make the hinge if you buy one of the 
uh, tutorials and, and it's just out there a lot of you know it already so I will see you with the hinge in here we will get started making our pocket pages and and I hope to see you very soon